Okay, so let's dissect this particular chord that we're looking at right here. Let's start with that. The first thing to know about this chord is that there are three notes and those three notes have each have a name. We know the root, right? That's the name of that note. In this context, in this chord, that is the root. And we know this is in the root because it is in root position and it's the bottom note. If you put a chord into root position, meaning that it's perfectly separated by thirds, then the lowest note in that stack of thirds is going to be the root note. Now also if you're in root position, you can find out what the third of the chord is. So we call this one the third. Even though they're all related by thirds, and we talked about that earlier, this the middle note is called the third of the chord. And now don't get that confused with the scale degree three, right? We're not talking about scales here. So remember, if, the, if we were talking about scale degree, we would write this as a three with a little um, uh, thing over the top of it. Uh, but we're not. We're talking about the third of the chord here. And typically, when we're talking about the third of the chord, we just spell out the word third, I think. There's not like a strict way we we say that or we notate the third of the chord. Um, but it, it's it's the middle note in a triad. It's the third of the chord. And the third of the chord is the one that holds the power. The third of a triad is uh, arguably the most important note in it. More on that in just a second. This top one we call it the fifth of the chord. So whether or not we're in the key, so this is an A chord. We know that because this is the root. The root is A. And whether or not we're in the key of A or some other key, when we talk about the chord, this note is called the third and this note is called the fifth of the chord, okay? Um, now, let's talk about this third for a minute. It is the powerful one. Here's the deal. When we look at a major chord and a minor chord of the with the same root, they are going to be different by exactly one note, right? Let me let me prove it. Um, this is an A major chord we're looking at now. Just trust me that it's a major chord for a second while I write another chord. Let's keep a rest in between. And let's go like this. Make sure this is accurate. Okay. All right. This is an A major chord. It's a th we see it's stacked in thirds and the root is A. This is an A minor chord. It's stacked in thirds and the root is A. How many notes are different? Just the third is the only one that's different. So let me put that in another way. Whenever you look at a chord, the root and the fifth don't matter in determining if it's a major or a minor chord. Only the third does, okay? So the fifth is an E in the major chord, the fifth is an E in the minor chord. The root is A in the major chord, the root is A in the minor chord. The third is C sharp in the major chord and a normal C natural in the minor chord, okay? So there's only one note different between a major chord and a minor chord. It's kind of wild, right? Because they sound very different, right? Remember. Major chords, like major keys, tend to sound kind of sort of happy. And minor chords tend to sound kind of sort of sad, right? Um, let's hear these so you can hear it. Right? Can you, you can, it's, it's hard to tell when it's such like, like blocky playing on the piano. It sounds like someone's like hitting these notes with hammers on the keys, but um, this one has a happier quality sound and this one has like a tinge of sadness to it. One more time. Okay, get it? Um, now that's a very subjective thing to, to, to hear. So if you don't hear it, then don't worry about it too much. So the takeaway for this video is that when we're working with triads, the third has the power. In fact, let me do one more thing. Let's take away the fifth, right? Now I only have two notes of the chord. 
right? We could call this a dyad, but more likely we would call it a major chord, an A major chord to be specific, because the fifth missing doesn't necessarily uh, slow us down too much. We can deal with that. We still know if it's a major or a minor chord, right? Because we have the third, right? But what if the third was missing? What do we call this? We, in this case, we do not have enough information to tell us if this is a major or a minor chord. We just don't know because we don't have the third, right? So the third is really important. This one we can still call an A major chord. This one we can't. We might call this an A5 chord, meaning it's just an A and a fifth above it. That's not the most common thing, but in this case, that is what we'd have to call it, something like that, or we would just not call it anything. We would say it's not really a chord because it doesn't have enough information to be a chord, right? What if, now this is where things get a little more complicated. Let's do, actually, let me just undo those two things, get us back to our two chords. What if the root was missing, right? What if we were here? Let's do it here, actually. What if the root was missing? Okay. Can we still figure out that this is an A minor chord? We could, given the context, if we looked around and saw that we were in the key of A minor, there was a lot of A stuff happening, we might be able to determine or decide that we can call this an A minor chord. But without the root, um, this starts to look an awfully lot like a C major chord, right? Because this is a third, and it looks like the first two notes of a C major chord, in which case we would need a G at the top in order to understand it. So this is also not quite inf enough information to figure out that it's an A minor chord, but it might be enough information to figure out it's a C major chord. So it starts to get a little... Um, wishy-washy around here, right? We'll encounter situations like that when we start doing some more analyses. But for now, um, let's just remember that the C or the third of the chord is the note that holds the power to determine if it is a major or a minor chord. If we take away the fifth, we can still deal with that chord. Uh, if we take away the third, we can't. And if we take away the root, the root, mm, things get a little more confusing. So keep that in mind. Now let's go on and let's talk about how we can determine if these are major or minor. Because I, I haven't told you that yet. What I've told you is that we need to know what the third is to know if it's major or minor. But what is the third? Um, what is the difference between these two chords? And how do we know this one is major and this one is minor? Let's, let's go over figuring that out in the next video.